LeBron James. That is some straight bullshit. Welcome to another MVP podcast. My name is Dylan. Today we are talking about Stephen A. Smith exposing LeBron James for lying about his loss to the Mavs in 2011. Check it out. I don't know whether or not y'all have checked out LeBron's new podcast, Mind the Game, with the one and only J.J. Reddick. To say this, let me get this out of the way. It's pretty damn good. I give both of them mad credit for it. We should all watch it. We want to hear about the subject of basketball. Those are two brothers worth listening to, no doubt about it. But that doesn't mean that occasionally LeBron don't get on my damn nerves or he won't get on my damn nerves. Because he said something this week that caught my attention about his early years with the Miami Heat, meaning year one in Miami, and talking about filling out that roster around him with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. Before I even go any further with my opinion, which I will openly confess pissed me off, take a listen to this clip, please, courtesy of 342 Productions and Uninterrupted. Check this out. My first year in Miami, yeah, we had a big three, and everyone said it's a super team, super team this, super team that. But we had to build our team around all minimum guys, which was still okay. But we didn't fill out the complimentary guys enough. Yeah, we had Rio, we had Udonis, you know, but we didn't we didn't have enough as far as enough complimentary guys to actually make it all work. And we still made it to the finals. We still made it to the finals and we still probably should have won the finals, but I still give credit. You listen, it is what it is. You you win and you lose, and we lost. There's no Dallas was fucking good and they hit it, they hit a stride at the right time. Dirk was unbelievable. Um, but my second year, we was able to grab some complimentary players and role players that really just, I'm talking about super superstars in their roles. LeBron James. That is some straight bullshit. You got to be kidding me. I know that you didn't just say that with the cameras rolling. That's bullshit. Somebody got to say it, so I'm going to say it. Now, let's get this out of the way right now. Put up the roster that LeBron is alluding to. LeBron is telling the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Joel Anthony, Carlos Arroyo, Mike Bibby, Mario Chalmers, by the way, Mario Chalmers could play. Eric Dampier, Udonis Haslam. Udonis Haslam was young, a young girl considerably at that particular moment in time. He wasn't some has-been, okay? Eddie House could shoot. Jawan Howard, Zadrunas Ogorskis, James Jones, Jamal Maglio, Mike Miller, Dexter Pittman. I don't know why Jerry Stackhouse was on there. He's only there for a month. He wasn't on the roster in the NBA Finals. LeBron, you want to make the argument about your roster. I totally understand. But you see, this is why I respect the man. I revere the man. He's number two on the Mount Rushmore all time. He ain't the GOAT. This is the reason why. I hope you're listening, Shay Shay. I hope you're listening, Shannon Sharp, who likes to call LeBron James GOAT James. Oh, I want to see what your response is to that sound. Because let me tell you something right now, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you a taste of history. That roster that LeBron James is alluding to, He makes valid points. He's not wrong about the roster. My point is, what the hell does that have to do with you, LeBron? What does that have to do with you? Now, why would Stephen A. ask such a question? Albeit rhetorically, here's why. Ladies and gentlemen, if you remember, in 2011, LeBron James and the Miami Heat, with that roster, were up 2-1 on the Dallas Mavericks before losing three straight. Do you know that LeBron James, in game four, scored zero points in the fourth quarter? Do you know that in game five, LeBron James scored two points in the fourth quarter? Do you know that in that game four, LeBron James had eight points? Eight! For a career 27 point per game scorer. For a dude that's approaching age 40 and averaging damn near 25. That LeBron James, eight points! In an entire game four of an NBA Finals. 17 in game five, but only two points in the fourth quarter. And in game six, he had 21. Significantly and precipitously lower than his average. 
This wasn't about the roster. You didn't lose to the Miami Heat because of your roster. You lost to the Miami Heat because of you. Because you weren't who you are. The LeBron James that ultimately learned to become a champion. The LeBron James whose resume elevated and changed forevermore. Who showed us that he could be a champion. Who reminded us again by winning back-to-back -back championships. Who ultimately, years later, overcame a 3-1 deficit and beat the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. You aren't that dude in 2011. I don't give a damn about no roster. You had D-Wade. You had Chris Bosh. You had the Haslams and the Eddie Houses and the Mike Millers of the world. You had a 2-1 lead in the NBA Finals. And guarded by everybody from Jason Kidd to Deshaun Stevenson to J.J. Barea to Jason Terry, there was an APB out for you in the fourth quarter. That was not about your roster. That was about you. Period. There's no way around that. I don't care about the roster. The roster didn't stop you from averaging over 25 throughout the season. The roster didn't stop you from getting to the finals. The roster didn't stop you from being up 2-1 in the finals. Even when Bert Dirk Nowitzki was scoring points. What stopped you was that you were nowhere to be found in the fourth quarter. That is not something we have ever been able to say about Michael Jordan. That's why you're number two all time on the Mount Rushmore, not number one. Let's stop that nonsense. You're right about the roster, but you ain't right as to that's the reason y'all lost in the finals. If you had shown up in the fourth quarter, y'all had won the chip. You'd have five championships instead of four. Let's move on to the next item right now, please, because we're staying within the James family. This one involves his son, however, Mr. Bronny himself, who may be entering the transfer portal after one year at USC. Rumors of the move started after former head coach Andy Enfield left the program to take the head coaching job at SMU. LeBron offered his thoughts last night, saying Bronny has some tough decisions coming up and that the family will support him no matter what he decides. I love that by LeBron James, no doubt. Great father, great family man. Like I told you before, my opinions about him on the fourth quarter, in the fourth quarter of 2011 NBA Finals has nothing to do with what I think about him as an overall player and as a role model and as a man and as a family man, businessman and everything else in between. All right, so remember a few weeks ago when Stephen A. Smith gave his initial reaction you know, his thoughts about LeBron's and JJ Reddick's podcast. He said that he is not going to be fooled. He said he's not going to be, you know, one of these analysts that LeBron is taking shots at and LeBron can get pull the wool over their eyes. He said he's going to be the only one who won't be fooled. And it, it did not take long for him to come out swinging. And that's what he did today because. The whole world, all right, saw LeBron flop in that series. But somehow he tried to make it seem that he needed, you know, extra players. So Stephen A, of course, took the time and he knew, he knows that this is going to generate a lot of views for his own podcast, cause a lot of controversy going straight to LeBron's neck. So that's why he came out with this. I, do I think that LeBron is going to respond? I don't think so because LeBron usually takes the high road. Other than that, he'll take like some subtle shots or something, but he usually takes the high road. So I don't, I don't expect for him to go on the podcast next week, you know, and suddenly start going at Stephen A. Smith. He might make a shot here, a shot there, subtle, something subtle, right? But do I think Stephen A. was right? Stephen A. was a thousand percent right because LeBron is the reason why that team lost. And he was underwhelming. He was nowhere near himself. He's being guarded by, you know, Jason Terry, JJ Barea, Jason Kidd, guys who he had strength, size, speed, whatever, all of that advantage over them. And they were still able to dominate him because it was all here in the mind. If 
he just played up to his averages, then Miami would have won and he would be a five time champion. Who knows what even would have happened if they would have won more than this? I mean, and who knows how they would have been looked at because that first loss, you know, really changed his legacy. That first loss cemented Michael Jordan, you know, as the greatest and took LeBron James out of that category. It prevented LeBron James from ever being the greatest. Because he was a favorite, he had two superstars, or all-stars at least, by his side, and he flopped. Jordan never did that. Right? Kobe Bryant never did that. So, we're going to always remember LeBron being on the biggest stage and flopping. But we don't have that memory of Michael Jordan. So then how can we rank LeBron over Michael Jordan? We can't. So that was a big loss for LeBron. Not so much Dwayne Wade, not so much Chris Bosh. But if you're trying to be the greatest, not to say that you got to be unblemished on the greatest stage, but you can't have a meltdown like LeBron had a meltdown. Right? Scoring zero points, two points, and all this in the fourth quarter. Scoring eight points in a game of the finals when your average is 25. That's just insanity. Absurd. Absurdity. Okay, um... Also, I'm just wondering what the direction of this podcast is going to be. Like, why is LeBron real? I thought this was about to be X's and O's. I thought they're going to be discussing the plays and all of this. So how do we have LeBron you know, making excuses for why his team lost in the finals? Why are we seeing this? It seems to me that over a few episodes, LeBron is taking time out to get things off of his chest and he's trying to create narratives that were not there before so at the end of the day i don't know what is the real mission here is it to create more narratives or is it to educate people about basketball because saying that you don't have a certain amount of players or good players or whatever good enough players to win a championship i don't know how much educating that is doing to anybody but um that's about it so until next time